All right, good morning, guys. How's everybody doing? So, today has been quite a day for me. Nothing that I can't handle, though. Nothing without God's help that I can't handle. Nothing comes my way that surpri doesn't surprise me. Um, I'm just on my way to do some errands. <clears throat> so, I'm at the dollar store, and i got to grab a notebook because Kevin Leandro wants a sworn statement. Uh about some things that happened at my work, right? So I talked about my work situation in my last video. So, um, trying to figure out how to put this, okay? So, I, I don't know how to put this really. I, I don't know any either easy way to say this. Um, so, when you're working, right, there are certain a certain amount of, what should I say, professional conduct expected, right? So, um, so when I was working for New Hampshire Cleaning in Concord, New Hampshire back in 2017, um, there was a situation that happened and I have talked about it a little bit on social media. I made a statement, but I haven't really done a video on it. And I want to talk about that. So first of all, okay, I worked with Gabe Bolt. And this is what this is going to be about. So Gabe Bolt I worked with. And Kevin Leandro is asking for a statement, or uh, a sworn statement, with my work situation with Gabe Bolt. So he's trying to say I'm lying about it, which I have a reputation for telling the truth. I think everybody lies of course right we're all human everybody does lie for Kevin to think he's never lied or nobody lies you know and my husband who was lying about domestic abuse etc you know that's just everybody has exaggerated usually any lie would be I think there's a time when you are like in the bible it talks about uh somebody who lied to protect someone's life you're not going to you know be telling somebody something who's trying to hurt you right so um but this is not the case kevin's trying to get me in court and prove i'm lying about my work situation uh so my husband is lying i'm gonna move this down so the cars don't think i'm recording them so my husband is lying about domestic abuse. I have a text. It's all, you know, it's all proven, all the lies he has told. So since he is somebody who has known, you know, that in court this isn't going to look good, he's trying to think, get me to look like I'm lying. So Kevin is using anything in the discovery process to try to find some dirt, 50 cents, 30 cents, whatever. Uh, he's trying to find, you know, my friendships, right? So this is nothing new to me, nothing new at all. When I was growing up, anything that meant something to me was usually taken away. So whether that was my green bicycle got the, that got stolen um, in the country in Deerfield, New Hampshire, whether it was my bunny that had a fox attack it, whether it was my friendships, whether it was my, um, whatever. Later on, it was the abortion, right? Something that should have been valuable to me, it was the abortion. So now we got my mother dragged into this. You know, my mother has been somebody who has lied about her daughter uh, on a regular basis. She has a certain perspective on things, and never mind what I think, right? And this is the way it is with a lot of um, girls who have had abortions. The mother is the one in charge, and that's it. And I'm sure you can relate, because when I was working for this lady recently, she was Catholic, and I'm not picking on Catholics, but the Catholics sometimes think that their way is the only way, right? They just, I mean, my boss, she runs everything. You, d you didn't have to think for yourself. Okay, and if you dare speak up and say, well, actually what you're saying isn't true. You know, I did clean the stove. Why 
why would somebody be lying about a stove when I had proof and another girl saying, yes, I saw her do it, right? There's no, there's no rhyme or reason with this. And I was telling a friend about this last night. When you have a Catholic background, you can see all the crazy stuff that happens, right? And you, you're on eggshells. You don't know whether if you go this way, you're in trouble or whether you go this way, you're in trouble. And this is why when girls have abortions, a lot of times they don't have much of a voice, especially with a Catholic upbringing. Uh, you just, you know, any anything you say or do, you know, you're in trouble. So um, the negativity isn't always good. So anyways, back to what I'm saying here. I think Kevin's mother had a Catholic background from what I researched. Anyways, um, so Kevin is trying to use a work situation. So when I was working for the Bolts, um, I had a situation with Gabe Bolt and basically he got in my personal space. Um, that is automatic workplace harassment, right? That's the way things are. But because Gabe was young, he didn't have as much experience in the workplace as I did. So I told him I was uncomfortable and he said, then I will leave. So, because of that workplace harassment, I have spoken up because it was never dealt with. Uh, I was fired shortly after and, um, you know, I tried to work it out. I tried to talk to them and say, hey, this is what's going on and this is what happened and I was shut down. Same with um, FBG, a recent cleaning company that I worked for. I had somebody leaving paper clips. I had somebody harassing me. Tried to talk to them at Focus on the Family. I've got to stay in here. And they shut me down, right? So because I was shut down, it wasn't something that was not going to be talked about, okay? So um, when someone tries to shut you down um, and you're trying to talk about something, You've got to talk about it. It's something that happened that just isn't something that you would not talk about, right? So he had gotten in my personal space and uh, a couple other things had happened. So I'm not going to go into that right now, but he, um, it was inappropriate, right? I don't know his motive for this. I don't know why he did it. I don't know. I don't know, you know, what the reasoning is. And that is where there is some room for communication, right? Because we don't always know someone's heart. We don't always know what's going on inside of them, right? So he definitely, um, you know, he definitely got in my personal space and hit on me. He definitely did. There's no question about it. Uh, that his behavior was not appropriate. So um, what's going on now is Leandro's trying to say, this is what happens with women who get harassed in the workplace, right? When you say something, you're being told what you're saying isn't true, right? That's what's going on. We see tons of this with the uh, Me Too movement and all this stuff. When you speak up, you know, people don't care about you. They just care about their reputation. So, uh, so I dealt with this on social media and it was not to destroy him because I support his channel. I support his channel a lot and he knows when I'm on there, he usually gives me a like or something. He likes my comments. We have worked this out. Okay. We have worked it out. So Kevin is trying to use something that we have worked out against me. So, I have a message <clears throat> I sent Leandro saying, you know, him and his dad said they were sorry if they offended me at all. And that is called responsibility. Something my husband should learn from them, right? My husband pushed me and instead of admitting it, he has denied the whole thing. So, um, Gabe and I, we came to an understanding he is got a great reputation online. He has thousands of subscribers. This happened years ago. He was younger. He was 
<clears throat> an immature manager. Uh, he was like a puppy dog. I think he said on one of his YouTube channels, he really just wanted people to like him. And with me, with the post-traumatic stress, okay, so this is kind of how things work sometimes. Uh, I was someone who won my distance, right? I like my space. I don't like someone getting too close. Um, so that's how that went down. And there were a couple other things that had happened that affected me with the post-traumatic stress at work. Um, and I, I don't think I need to get into that right now. But uh, when you're dealing with post-traumatic stress at work, ladies, it's something that can affect you a lot. And that's kind of, you know, the way it was. And I think because I had my defenses up so much, and told him I was uncomfortable, and he said, I'll leave. Um, basically, you know, I think I came off as somebody who didn't really like him. Matter of fact, he sent me a text and said, you know, he, I think he was trying to communicate. He said, do you even like me? <laughs> because I think I just gave off this aura that I didn't really like him, and that wasn't true. I just, I was busy doing my work. When I work, I like to concentrate. I like to get done what I got to do. I'm using my masculine energy to get done what I need to do. So I, uh, I was like, yeah, I like you a lot. Now let's get back to work. So, um, you know, I think I, I played a game too and said, oh, do you like me? And, um, he was just a shy kid. He just was really insecure, acting really nervous around me, uh, kind of, you know, didn't really have much confidence then, but, um, I thought he was kind of, you know, just this geeky kind of kid and that's all there was to it. So this is going to court today that I have to talk about this, I probably should put in some stuff about the post-traumatic stress because that's a big part of this. I mean, when I started there, everything was good. <clears throat> and then we had a situation where um, this, this was not policy, but we had a situation where these people in a company had candy out for everyone to take, right? So I had my little hiking bag on and at that time I was hiking more with my kids. So they had candy out and I was like, oh great, you know, I'll take some candy home for my kids. Not that I'm a big candy eater because I'm not. And my mama was taught me not to eat much candy. And that's why I had no cavities whatsoever until I had my first one like at 40 something years old, my first cavity. So... Um, anyway, so I took some candy and there, you know, I just figured it, it was there for everybody. And then there were M&Ms out, you know, for everybody at this office. And I helped myself to the M&Ms. And then I was at another account and I was told we could help ourselves to the food. So I helped myself to a soda in the refrigerator and because of that, I was accused of stealing. And since then, a lot of cleaning companies are like, what? That's not stealing. That's for everyone, right? So, um, so I was accused of stealing. And I'm like, you know, Gabe had taken me into a kitchen area. Now, this is where the post-traumatic stress comes in. So he took me into the kitchen area. He's like, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm like, yeah. And he's like you know, basically he came down on me pretty hard. He was like, you know, you're stealing stuff. And I'm like, what? You know? And, uh, he's like that, you know, whatever the words were, I can't exactly remember, but that candy is for other people or whatever. And I'm like, you know, just taken aback that he's accusing me of stuff. Now, where this post-traumatic stress stuff comes in is I was healing from the post-traumatic stress with a post-abortive class and they cut it off, right? Because I said, you know, I think this curriculum could be better. 
So they cut it off and now I'm going into the workplace where accusations again are being made at me. Same thing that happened with the abortion. My mom was accusing me of, you know, condemning me for being pregnant, although that was allowed, you know, sex outside of marriage. And so the in intricacies, I guess is how you put it, of the healing from the abortion was still there. So now I'm having a similar situation at work with somebody accusing me of stuff that I didn't do. And as a matter of fact, he ended up saying, you know what, it wasn't in the policy. Uh, you know, I had another girl to tell me to, there was no communication. I had another girl to tell me to help myself, that I'm welcome to help myself. So yeah, I was not guilty, but his anger is what I felt. So what ended up happening is from there, I was like, that's it. You know, I am not putting up with a guy who is going to get angry with me. And I'm, so I was pretty much uh, ready to quit. I said something like, that's it, I'm done, or something like that. And he had apologized. He said, I'm sorry, you know, it wasn't policy, I'm sorry. And so because of his anger, I was like, that's it. So we worked it out, <clears throat> and I went back to work. And everything was good, but then I felt again, some stuff going on from the post-traumatic stress. And I was just like praying it through. And I'm like, God, please help me. I feel like this guy is too close to me. I'm feeling his leadership and mostly his authority where I felt like he already misused it was affecting me. And the same thing happened with the abortion. I had somebody in authority who misused their authority my father, my mother, the doctor, etc. So here I am dealing with this and I've got scripture in my head. God says that there's always a way out, right? You won't be tempted beyond what you can handle because you'll, there's always a way out. Something like that in Corinthians. So I'm working and he's still coming up to me and giving me a lot of attention. And I'm just trying to stay away from him. Because something with this whole abortion thing is bugging me, right? I just feel like he is way too close to me. He's in my personal space. He's being in, to me, I felt like my perspective, I'm going to put the heat on because it's cold today. My perspective is he was too close to me, right? So uh, instead of me, like I'm trying to stay away from him and trying to keep the boundaries there, and instead, he got like right next to me, like right close to me. And I just totally, like, I think I was against the wall and totally felt so uncomfortable, totally disassociated from him. And then from there, he was being really rude to me once again. So <clears throat> this was never dealt with. It was never dealt with at work. So I tried to tell his dad about what was going on and shortly after I was told the night before that I did a good job he fired me so he um he basically fired me and I think his dad said yeah his I still have an email his dad saying with everything that happened I'm more comfortable you know basically with not hiring you back and I tried to work it out with them for years and then Gabe got on YouTube and I'm like I'm going to confront him, you know, and I started this YouTube channel and I'm like, he is going to be held accountable for how he treated me like trash. There were some texts after too, where he was just not being nice to me at all. So I was just like, you know, I'm going to stand for myself. And I think that's really common with women who have had, um, an abortion too, before healing. There's a lot of um, anger when you feel mistreated. And I'm like, I am going to deal with him. And I'm going to deal with the way he treated me. You know, not only did he um, mistreat me at work, but then when he, he uh, fired me, he was pretty rude to me when he fired me. He was, he was just, you know, 
he drove up in a van, er, stopped in front of me, pretty ticked off, and whatever his perspective of was me was very low at that time, very low. And he mistreated me, so I'm like, I'm going to confront him right on social media. So I did. I did. I confronted him hitting on me. And then Leandro has tried to use that in court now, that I have made things up about him when Leandro was not there. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with today. I've got somewhere to go, guys, and i got to get going. But uh, stand up for yourself, ladies. When something happens at work and you're dealing with workplace harassment, whether it's meant to happen or whether he's just like this kid who just lost his mind for a while he didn't quite know what he was thinking or doing or whatever he was doing you know just stick up for yourself and so I have prayed about it God has fought for me I have prayed for an apology and I got one so uh if Leandro's now saying that you know I've threatened to sue people there's been a couple yeah there's been a couple there's been the Broadmoor which I did a video about for wrongful termination and yeah I said you better basically straighten this out with me to the bolts because um hold on because ma'am 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 you dropped something it yeah right by that van yeah yep <laughs> so um I'm like you know you better deal with this because you know uh, or otherwise we can go to court because you just totally, you just totally mistreated me. You just totally, uh, you know, w you not only did you hit on me, but you also accused me of some things that were not appropriate. So yeah, I had to stand for myself, but since then he has said, sorry, we're good. Uh, everything's fine. And that's pretty much how it's ending but Leandro's trying to say oh you sue everybody if I was out to sue them I wouldn't be friends with them I wouldn't be building his community with him I wouldn't be doing any of this so we worked it all out so that's what I got for now ladies don't be afraid to stand up for yourself don't be afraid uh stand up for yourself you know when you're at work especially when you work with men um and you don't know them very well I didn't really know him and his dad and his brother and everything very well at the time don't be afraid to stand up for yourself so that's what i got for now ladies thanks for joining me